And this is a Creog review of acute fatty liver of pregnancy. We'll start with a quick overview. So acute fatty liver pregnancy is a rare but emergent obstetrical condition with an incidence of anywhere between one in 7,000 and one in 15,000. The symptoms of this condition are fairly vague and nonspecific and can include vomiting, jaundice, polydipsia, polyuria, abdominal pain, and encephalopathy. There are several theories about the etiology, but it's really uncertain. And some known risk factors are having a male fetus, which increases your risk about three times, having multiple gestations, LCHAD or other um, fatty um, chain mutations um, in the liver, a history of the disease or any other liver disease. Um, and sort of the key takeaway is that you want to act quickly to diagnose this condition, rule out other liver pathologies, determine that this is what is going on, and then act quickly as patients can decompensate very rapidly. These are the Swansea criteria for diagnosing acute fatty liver of pregnancy. And I don't necessarily think you need to memorize all of these for CREOGS, but I think it's worth kind of having an idea of what the diagnostic criteria are. And to diagnose acute fatty liver, you need to have six or more of these criteria met um, in the absence of any other liver pathology. And so it's important to go through the differential um, before diagnosing acute fatty liver. So this list is just worth kind of being familiar with before the exam. This is a chart that I made to think through the differential. If we have a case on the exam where we have a patient who has a transaminitis um, and we're trying to, you know, figure out which path to go down for the exam question. Um, so this is something that I came up with and kind of how I ca would categorize this in my brain for the exam. So the first category is kind of diseases that are less specific to pregnancy, but we still might be tested on and need to think about. Um, if the patient has an alcohol history, we can think about alcoholic hepatitis, autoimmune or viral hepatitis. And then it's important to think about medication-induced hepatitis, especially since acetaminophen is a sort of a go-to analgesic in pregnancy. So if we have a history where a patient's been in a lot of pain and taking a lot of Tylenol, um, we can certainly think about that as an etiology. Um, and then various herbal supplements um, like Kava Kava or Germander are two that are sort of more commonly taken in pregnancy and um, can cause hepatitis. Um, the other thing to think about with the transaminitis is um, something we're all familiar with. If there's hypertension, our minds go to preeclampsia or HELP syndrome. Um, and then jaundice is, is fairly nonspecific. Um, you know, usually when a patient has ICP or gallstones, they will present with jaundice um, if it's severe. However, um, jaundice can also present in acute fatty liver and um, other hepatic conditions. So um, that's not um, necessarily a determining factor. And ICP patients will typically present with pruritus, which is a little bit more specific for ICP. Um, and then um, for acute fatty liver, the sort of more specific symptoms are polyuria, anorexia, and encephalopathy. Those symptoms are um, not nearly as common with the other um, liver pathologies in pregnancy. This is also a chart to help distinguish lab abnormalities between different liver pathologies of pregnancy. So in acute fatty liver, hypoglycemia is very common, which is usually not the case in HELP or ICP. Um, LF, AST and ALT um, will be elevated in all of these conditions. However, in ICP, the elevation is typically um, between one and five times normal. Um, in acute fatty liver, it's usually between five and 10 times normal. And in HELP or preeclampsia, it's anywhere between one and a hundred times normal. And um, so if you have a very, very significantly elevated LFT that comes up on CREAs, you might think more in the um, health preeclampsia direction. Um, and um, otherwise, you know, they'll be elevated in any of these conditions. Um, your white count can also be elevated in any of these conditions, but is usually most profoundly elevated in acute fatty liver. Thrombocytopenia is most associated with helper preeclampsia. Um, and then coagulopathy is 
another one of these defining features and how a lot of patients decompensate with acute fatty liver. So you have a significantly um, prolonged um, PT. Sorry, that should actually be prolonged. So I guess increased um, PT, PTT, um, and then um, a prolonged, you know, patients can actually decompensate into DIC pretty rapidly. And then just to go over the management, um, the management is um, delivery is the first thing. And then after delivery, um, it's really supportive care. So you wanna aggressively support hypo their hypoglycemia, their renal failure, um, their coagulopathies. Many of these patients will be compensated to DIC. Many of them require ICU level care after delivery. Um, and in very severe cases, um, there are actually reports of patients needing um, liver transplant afterwards.